Oh my god, I don't know why I love that. I, I don't know. Alright, what is up guys? It's Dr. Zor helping cure you from being a noob. Today's topic is one that so many players have asked about me. What is the best sensitivity for Valorant? And this is a big question that really we need to delve into to figure out. I will start off by saying that sensitivity is really all about preference, but there are some foundational ranges that you want to be in in order to perform at your best. So with this video, we're going to go through all the different settings that you can adjust that will give you the best best sensitivity for you. We're going to go over your window settings, your in-game settings, and your mouse settings, your DPI, and your eDPI. What the heck is an eDPI? We're going to delve into that today. I'm Dr. Zora. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment down below on your sensitivity settings. And make sure to follow me on Twitch and join our Discord for more in-depth conversations. All right, that's enough of me talking. Let's get into the video. Alright, jumping right into it, the first thing you want to do is your Windows settings. So you want to get there by going to the start bar, hitting settings, you'll end up on this page, type in mouse, hit that mouse settings, and then hit additional mouse options, and then you're going to end up on the mouse properties. From here, what we're focused on is the pointer options. Click that right there and make sure that the pointer speed is set as 6. This is usually the default setting, but make sure nothing thing got screwed up and you are at 6, so you have the standard speed on your mouse that everyone else uses. If you do end up going to pro settings and trying to test out their sensitivities, but you have this pointer speed at something else, you're going to be off and your aim is going to be a little bit different. From here, you want to look at enhanced pointer precision. This is pretty much talking about mouse acceleration, and from what I've seen, the consensus is to turn this off. So I would say just turn this off, and this will give you more control of your mouse versus the mouse code itself trying to move on its own with the enhanced mouse acceleration. All right, we're going to go into the in-game sensitivity in just a moment, but we need to talk about your DPI and your polling rate. What the heck is that? Your DPI stands for dots per inch, and it measures how sensitive your mouse is. The higher the DPI, the further the cursor on your screen will move when you move the mouse. For a game like Valorant, you actually want to keep this pretty low. The pros usually use something between 400 and 800. There are some exceptions such as Hiko who uses 1600, but you do want to keep this relatively low as you want a lower sensitivity. Personally, I prefer at 800 DPI and a lot of the newer players are using this as well. It's slow enough that you can still be very precise with your shots, but it also allows you to browse the web and do other tasks on the computer normally. I found that on 400 DPI, things were just way too slow outside of the game. So to balance things out, I chose an 800 dpi and very quickly before we go into the in-game sensitivity we need to talk about the polling rate this is how often the mouse will report its positions in the computer and a higher polling rate will decrease the lag that occurs between when you move your mouse and when the movement actually shows up on the screen so you want to keep your polling rate as high as your mouse can have now going into the meat of the conversation what sensitivity do you need in game and i'm going to show you guys the difference between the high sensitivity and the low sensitivity and why you should use the lower sensitivity. So to demonstrate that, we got our trusty goniometer here that's gonna help us out. And what we're gonna do today is gonna go into a high sensitivity, let's say about 1.5 here, and we're gonna show you guys why this is not effective. So we got a goniometer, we're gonna measure how much motion we need to do to go from target A to target B, and then go into target C that's a little bit further away. So I have my Viper Mini centered here and I'm gonna go to target A and let's see how much movement I gotta do to go to target B. All right, let's take our goniometer here. I'm gonna match it parallel to the Viper Mini. It's about 10 degrees. All right, how about if we need to move to the bigger target over here? Let's take a look at how much we gotta move our wrist. All right, I don't know if you can see on the screen. I don't even think I'm gonna take a measurement. I could barely see much of a change of how much I moved my mouse. So that's why you want to use a lower sensitivity. If you have a higher sensitivity, making these small adjustments will be super hard. You're talking about a small couple of degrees of difference with your wrist in order to go from one target that's close compared to another target that's further away. You can barely notice the difference on your screen. So we're done with the goniometer here, and this is why I recommend a slower sensitivity. And mine's also pretty high as well, 0.439, but it gets the job done, and you can see how I aim differently with a smaller sensitivity. With this, we're going from target A now again, going to target B. You can visually see the amount of wrist motion that's there. I'm not using my arm yet because it's so, such a small distance. Now if I go from target A to target C, you can again visually see I'm using my wrist 
primarily, but I'm also moving my forearm a small amount. You want to use this bulky bad boy over here. You want to use that. I just punched my screen, but that's okay. You want to use your wrist and your arm to aim, and that's going to give you the most accuracy. That's going to give you the most motion to fine tune you as much of your aim as possible with the lower sensitivity. So again, lower sensitivity, you can do so much more. A basketball player is not going to just use their legs or just use their arm. They're going to use whatever tools they have in their body to get the job done and that's the same with aiming you want to use everything that your body has available at its disposal to help you aim and you actually want to put a sensitivity that will let you fully utilize that we interrupted message to remind you to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you don't you will remain iron i'm just saying all right back to the video so now we have an idea of what sensitivity we should use, but how low should we go? So for starters, for all new players, I would recommend you start off with a sensitivity that matches your mouse pad. And what I mean by this is if you have your mouse pad in front of you and you glide across from one end to the other, you should hit a 180 degree turn on the screen. And that's a good starting point as you won't really need to do much more than that. This is a good place of reference for you to start off. But again, you don't want to stick just to this. You want to take a look and start off here, get that 180 degree turn that matches your mouse pad. So again, you can do whatever you need to do on the mouse pad, whatever aim and flicks you need to do. And then from there, fine tuning it and figure out what feels comfortable for you. You have that starting point, you're starting off pretty low. And then from there, it's finding out what feels most comfortable for you and what's going to help you hit your shots. So to fine tune your aim, what you want to do from here is try to figure out if you're overshooting or undershooting. So let's say we're trying to flick onto targets and let's say I miss when I flick over to the right multiple times, I'm overshooting every single shot. So from there, what I know what I need to do is I need to fine tune and adjust this just a touch. Don't make drastic changes here, just a touch, maybe just 0.01 of an adjustment and try to see if that helps out and then work from there. Maybe you undershot at first then you want to bump it up to 0.449 or something like that and then again see if you're undershooting overshooting for me i think i'm see just like there i was actually trying to aim but i overshot so again i want to drop it down to 0.439 which seems the most comfortable for me and it seems the most viable for my aim personally again this is my preference you want to figure out what works best for you and what will help you hit your shots so identify if you're overshooting or undershooting with your aim and then work from there one more thing that I just want to point out is if you find yourself picking up your mouse a lot of the time, you probably have way too low of a sensitivity, then you want to bump it up to something that you don't have to do that. You want to be able to mostly keep your mouse on the mouse pad as long, much as you can and not have to actually pick it up no matter what distance you have to move to get your shots. All right, moving on next, we have to talk about your mouse pad space. Let's say you have a pretty small mouse pad that goes from here to here. So as a result, if you want to make these big adjustments, your lower sense isn't going to do the trick. So you're going to have to unfortunately bump this up a little bit so you can work with that. It's not optimal. I know some people have issues with their mouse pad space and their desk space. So I just want to reiterate this, that you got to sometimes work with what you got. But I would heavily recommend getting a larger mouse pad. I don't know the exact dimensions, but a large size mouse pad would be the most beneficial to ensure that you have that space to do whatever you need and still have a low sensitivity. I have an extra large one so I can do a lot of different stuff with this but again you don't have to have it as big as mine just have a nice large size mouse pad and that's going to get you as far as you need to go. Along with that, a big aspect that you gotta consider is your mouse weight. A lot of mouses are now going into that lightweight trend, and as a result, a lot of players are feeling more comfortable with it, but they don't adjust their sensitivity to the mouse. If you have a lighter mouse, it's easier to move it, so as a result, your sensitivity is gonna feel a lot faster if you keep it at the same settings as if you were to use a larger, heavier mouse. So you wanna consider this. If the mouse is a little bit lighter, you may wanna tone down your sensitivity just a touch to match the weight because again you will move quicker and faster with a lower weight mouse likewise if you go the opposite and you get a heavier mouse you want to actually up the sensitivity as you'll need to do a little bit more work to get to your target so that is the essential tips that you need to know to find the right sensitivity for you. And if you still need to find some inspiration, you can go into prosettings.net, go into the players and click on Valorant. And this will go through all the different pro players sensitivity settings. You can look at Shroud, you can look at Mixwell, you can look at Scream, you can look at Asu, and just take a look at the settings that they have and try to mimic it and see if it works for you. And again, make sure you don't follow it to heart. Make those small adjustments as you need as I said in the video to get 
the sensitivity that works best for you. And again, make sure you're following the EDPI. The EDPI is the product of the DPI multiplied by the sensitivity. And you want to use this as a reference point. Different people will use different DPIs and as a result, they have to adjust their sensitivity accordingly. You may have a different sensitivity and DPI from Shroud. So you want to use the EDPI and match your DPI and sensitivity so that it hits that EDPI value and you will have the same sensitivity that Shroud has. So use this EDPI. For example, I actually use Shroud sensitivity, but I have an 800 DPI and he has 450. So I have to use the EDPI and I end up with a sensitivity of 0.439 to match what Shroud has. This is more important than following these. Most players don't have 450 DPI, so you don't want to just copy the sensitivity straight out. You want to actually calculate the EDPI and match it with your settings. So if you get the same EDPI, you will get the same sensitivity as the ones that the pros are using on this website. That's all I have for this video. Again, if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button, like the video, and comment down below on what your sensitivity is in Valorant. Again, I also stream on Twitch, and we have a nice Discord community that we can really delve into certain topics. So make sure you follow me on those platforms as well. It's all in the description. All right, I'm Dr. Zora, helping cure you from being a noob, and I'll see you next time. Peace.